Are we working? Hey! Okay, cool, it's working. Check this out. Ah, that looks like... That just looks terrible. Okay, enough with the stupid intro thing. Hey, hey, how's it going here? Uh, Raphael, uh, in a delightfully uh, fake chipper mood. <laughs> Welcome to Orthodox Review, the most uneducated educational program here on the internet today. I am your host, the guy with one and a half thumbs, and I know I'm I'm working on the cigarette thing. I've been on the vape, but I'm still it's it's rough. Okay, so just you know, cut me a little slack. Hey, I've got I've got coffee. I've got coffee i've got i've got a whole pot of coffee so this might be a long stream we might go over the one hour mark who knows we'll see what happens but there are a few things that are worth discussing first and foremost absolute chad absolute based chad uh, patrick lee sent me this new computer just take a look at this thing real quick this is a, um, what's the company? I can, hey, Sarah, it's, hey, I missed you guys too. What, what's it called? Republic of Gamers. That's the name of the company. Apparently, it's a very, very expensive computer. Um, <laughs> and uh, no lag. <laughs> the processor is fast enough to run all the things so we can do a proper live stream. Uh, and so it won't take forever for me to edit videos. So that's pretty cool. And since he's in the chat, I will mention my old computer. Uh, I'm going to send it to Despair Not, uh, my buddy Michael, because he needs a computer. So we're going to do that. And here comes Spooky Cat. She's thinking about coming onto the desk. She's in the closet now. I had to... Okay, so I also got a new bed. Guy from church donated a bed. What does this anti-Zionist crap go... Got to do with books? Uh, nothing. It's my YouTube channel, and I can do whatever I want with it. Um, so, yeah, so uh, I was donated a bed. This is the first time in years I've had a bed. Anyone who's been following the channel for an extended period of time knows that uh, for the longest time, um, what I had was what was left of a futon frame with a piece of wood on it and a pad about yay thick. Um, so, so I had to move some books. So now, uh, so now I've got a bookcase right here which is cool. Um, so when we're doing streams and stuff, I could just grab what I need because this is the case that has like my most commonly used volumes on it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, why don't you talk to your priest about it, man? Um, yeah, so, okay, so there's a couple things I wanted to talk about. Uh, first of all, thank you, Patrick, for the computer. He also sent me a few other uh, odds and ends, um, which are brilliant and beautiful. One of which is a prayer book. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about this today because uh, it's a great example of um, what you can do with very little um, experience as far as self-publishing goes with the whole print-on-demand thing. Sent me some cigars, which is cool. I don't smoke cigars, but I guess I do now. And he sent me a bunch of coffee. Um, but it's unground, so I need a coffee grinder. <laughs> I think there's one at church. Maybe I, I can bring my coffee to church and grind it there. Uh, but yeah, I've got like some... Um, this is from Golden Mouth Roastery, not to be confused with the that other company. So this is uh, barrel-aged uh, in... Bourbon whiskey casks, single origin, organically grown, traded fairly, roast, uh, roasted on March 2nd of this year. So that's that. Uh, then um, I'm a fan of Christmas blends. He didn't know this, but now now you do. Actually, I Patrick, I think, is still at the monastery. Uh, he went to Holy Cross. So we got some Monastery Blend from Vashon Island. It's the uh, Christmas blend. And then he sent me uh, some as well from Burning Bush. Bur Bush. Burning Bush, which is a St. Tikans. And this is also uh, a Christmas blend. 
Now, fun fact, I do have a St. Tikon's uh, Burning Bush coffee cup. And I just dropped some holy water. I use it to hold my pens and such, because uh, um, I used to use this one when I was working at the vape shop, and I I, I broke it. So now it holds pens. Uh, <laughs> That's, that's that. Spooky cat's hanging out in the closet. I had to move a few things into the closet um, to make room for the for the, the, the sleeping thing there. Um, yeah, I you know, I used to... Well, okay, so there, there's one of those ninjas in the kitchen. Um, belongs to, the, you know, my buddy Andre, who lets me live here. Um, and uh, he broke it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just grind the coffee in that. But, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. always pay it forward, Raul. I, I, I gots to. Um, you know, I, God, God has been better to me than I could ever possibly imagine or deserve. So I gotta pass things along. Let's see. Lawrence, hello, how are you? Um, I'm not even paying attention to this dude. What are you talking about? I'm not a Protestant. No, I'm not. Um, you can do whatever. Uh... You can do whatever you want, he says. That's why your priest discourages you from that. Discourages me from what? I was, and was told by, I was told by my priest not to live stream. Yeah, he told me to cool it for a while because I was getting into some weird stuff, but we're going to be talking about books and stuff, so... Uh, and not for nothing, but there's there's more to the story. Right on, Lawrence. So, um, the reason I said at the beginning that uh, this is a fake chipper attitude, I am in performance mode right now, uh, and it took me uh, a little while to get to this point. <sighs> Um, my Patreons, uh, know this, uh, I've been really, really struggling with the, uh, anxiety and depression lately, and I wound up having a massive anxiety attack after Divine Liturgy yesterday. Um, well, it kind of started during Divine Liturgy, unfortunately, and, uh, it had been building up for a while, and, and you know, just a reminder, I, I am medicated for it, I, I take Paxil as a, as a regulatory SSRI, and, um, but of course, my situation being what it is this year, it's, you know, a lot more self-care has to go into it in order for me to maintain, like, a, an even keel. And not doing, you know, very well about it. But at any rate, um, so, <sighs> one of the nice things about having, you know, a, a massive panic attack is the recoil from that is usually like I feel like the burden's been lifted a little bit and I wanted to get on and make some content um, and apparently I have gas so pardon me I love coffee y'all I really do anyway um so that's the situation right now um the last episode we did was audio solvers I haven't written any new episodes yet um, I was going to write one on this, but when it came, uh, I was I was in the thick of it. Like, you know, I've been sitting on this equipment for a hot minute now, and uh, it's just, so my apologies um, for not getting in sooner. Uh, but, so, but it occurred to me that um, this is a great example, uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, page formatting a little bit, uh, because, uh, like I said, okay, so this is... Print on demand, uh, the kind of stuff you get through like KDP publishing, um, Amazon, that sort of thing. And so I do have a few examples of smaller print on demand books because the book I'm working on eventually will be probably about this size. And we'll get into that a little bit too. But um, it takes me to another uh, small print on demand book. And this is the Lorica, which uh, I had a PDF uh, file of this from the author back when he first made it. And then published it, and then uh, so I ordered one, and I never reviewed it. Um, I was unable to because uh, I don't have good eyesight, <laughs> and my glasses aren't that strong. Uh, and literally, it the, the, the typeset is so small. I mean, it's 
it's tiny. This this is like the typeset you would see on like the footnotes in a Bible. Uh, you're looking at maybe five, six point uh, typeset. And I know this wasn't on purpose. It, it, it was a formatting issue. Uh, whereas now here with this one, it's not the most intricate prayer book by any stretch of the imagination. But the typeset is, you're looking at about nine, ten point. Um, and it's clear, and it's, it fits the page. And that's the thing about when, when you're self-publishing a book is, I made this the mistake the first time I, I, I did that. I was, you know, of course, this is like 10 years ago, something like that. Um, you can't just take a block of text and throw it into their program and expect it to, <laughs> to work out. So this is why I have my priest. Uh, uh, he's he's going to be doing my... Uh, my page formatting for me which is kind of cool and and as you've seen with the books he's published ow my foot like okay so the divine liturgy book that we use at saint basil's that he put together he is i mean the guy can set a page father andrew is amazing uh and i've shown you before the uh, the books that he's hand bound himself um which <laughs> which I was duly impressed by. And he said he'd teach me how to do it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and it's, what's interesting, um, it's 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 matins for Tuesday mornings. Uh, just Tuesday. Because uh, at one point at St. Basil's, we were uh, we were having matins on Tuesday mornings for, you know, just trying to get people into the rhythm of, rhythm of coming to church more. And so he's, he's an amazing, amazing book guy. Uh, in addition to being... Um, you know, just an amazing priest. Um, what's going on in the chat? What's what's going on over there? You people arguing over not, nonsense again? Just don't watch this. Oh, hi, Sarah. Yeah, his Orologian for parachutes. Thank, uh, thank you for bringing that up, uh, Alexander. I did talk to him about making that available publicly. And he's not too keen on the idea of, of just making it available. But I think that if if I can get enough people together that are willing to pony up for him, because they don't cost much to print, um, I might be able to get him to do like a limited run for personal use. Uh, part of it, I, I don't, because when we discussed it, there's really no copyright issues because it's all like farm sourced off the internet stuff. And then of course the, uh, the Psalm translation of the one that he gave me is the RSV, which this is the OCA standard. Um, I uh, we talked about me doing an edited version, um, kind of like the uh, kind of like the Anthologian, but uh, you know, a little pared down, uh, more simplified. And so I started putting that together, and the more I got into it, and I was like, I'm in inputting all this text, and I kept running into an issue with the Psalms, like, because, I mean, there are Psalm translations I like and I would prefer, but then I was like, oh, but people are going to complain about this, people are going to complain about that. So the way I'm going with that now is there's only going to be reference to the Psalms that should be plugged in. <laughs> so there won't be any psalmody printed in the book. It'll just say, okay, you know, these are the you know, these are the six songs and you use your own Psalter for it. And that kind of creates another issue where people are like, well, I brought it all in one book. And it's like, well, but you know, it doesn't matter what translation of the Psalms I put in this book. Someone's going to complain. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. I'm sorry to say, but I also figured this is a good way of like, you know, we buy Psalters, we should use them. So it stands to reason that if, you know, we're at a, at a, in a place where we're, you know, praying the canonical hours, um, that, you know, we should use the Psalters we have handy. And so just putting in for each service, you know, these are the Psalms you need to read here. And then utilizing your own Psalter with the translation that you like to use, that you're comfortable using, that you're 
uh, would probably be the way to go. What what's that about my cat hat? No, I'm I'm well aware of what my priest told me, and I'm allowed to live stream now as long as I keep it tame. So it's okay, you know. Situations change. I wasn't always bald either, um, but I, I appreciate you looking out. Uh, spooky cat is just chilling over there. Anyway, um, not only did I get distracted by the cat. But now I'm distracted by a piece of garlic I just got out of my tooth with my tongue. Anyway, a uh, little question. Uh, this is from uh, Jay Lucas. Little question. How do you bind together Orthodox Christianity with your Western heritage? I ask this as a resident of Portugal where there is no Orthodox church in my language yet. Um, the two um, don't have anything to do with one another, really. I mean... You know, the West was Orthodox long before, you know, the papacy decided to change the change the rules. And we had the schism. Um, of course, here in America, we're, you know, we have Orthodox churches that use, you know, the English language. Um, now, I know there are Orthodox churches in Portugal, but not many. Um, so I un understand your frustration with not being able to get to a parish that speaks your language. That being said, you are ahead of the game in that, you know, you're you're looking at orthodoxy and into orthodoxy and its practices and its beliefs. And uh, luckily here in the 21st century, we can at least get the text for the services in our native tongue. So even though we don't necessarily understand what they're saying, we can read the translation um, because our theology is expressed in our worship. Um, you know, if, if, if you were to read through the divine liturgy, you know, and believe what it says, that's, I mean, that's, that's really, uh, our belief. So even if it's not in a language you understand, I would still recommend if at all possible, um, I, I would advise, not even recommend advise and admonish you to, to, uh, get in contact with an Orthodox church, go to one, if at all possible, uh, at some point. Uh, I know you said you don't. There's not one near you, but um, but you're on the right track. Um, I will say that you know it's, it, it, you know it's it's so weird to believe that like only ten years ago or so, like internet orthodoxy like we know it today didn't exist for better or worse, and, you know, and that goes both ways. Um, so there is so much more information out there now, and it's it's kind of a beautiful thing. I mean, internet orthodoxy is dangerous, you know. I. I've fallen into that trap more than times than I care to admit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, despite all that, like, you know, there is good. Let's see. Do, 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 is Father Andrews or Logan different from something like the Jordanville? Uh, yes, it is. But not in the ways you would think. Um, really, uh, let me grab him. After all that talk about how I love that, like, all the books I usually use are in this bookcase and are closer to the desk, I, I still want to have to go back there um, for these. Okay, so so if you look at the uh, Jordanville, and this is the brown cover. Um, I forgot how flexible the brown cover is. Um, you know, you have everything you would need for, like, the monastic order of the hours, okay? So you've got all the uh, variations for midnight office, through the day into um it, right through small compline and the bed bedtime prayers and then you have selected materials from the tri uh, triodian pentecostarian the menaean which you'll also find in here uh but in here okay so you also have the canons that are there for the order of uh for the order of communion okay so now this is meant for monastic usage i mean parishes do too there's nothing wrong with parishes using it. Um, so what Father Andrew did with this one, and he specifically called it a parish book of hours, because it doesn't have everything in it. Um, so you've got matins, 
uh, first, third, sixth, ninth hour, the liturgy, the typica, vespers, and compline, and that's it. Um, and then so you have an appendix with you know variables, and so but the way it's laid out is very much the same, um, and the translation, and he. He doesn't cut and paste. He, he's a typing machine. He actually typed this um, and then said it. So and, and so the translation of of the prayers and everything uh, just aligns with the OCA approved translations. Um, and in fact, on the OCA website, if you were to like go uh, looking for, um, for some of the service, some of the services that they actually have posted on the site are his... Um, are his work uh, mostly uh, from the reader service book that he um, that he published during the scandemic, and these are still available. They're like four bucks, um, and it's uh, and it's for Sundays and feast days, but it's you know vespers, third, sixth, and uh, typica. Yeah, wow, it's three years old already. Um, and uh, it's also available as a, a free uh, PDF. And in fact, there's a ton of services on our church website that are available for free download. And they're the same format that you would get in like the printed version. So that's wilmingtonoca.org. Um, so, uh, and the links for where you can, you know, for, for the Lulu links are also there. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Um, where where are we here? Let's see here. Background, field capture. I might. Huh, that's interesting. Let's see here. All right, hold on a second here. Background. All right, so my window capture is ah. No, let's let's do this. Two seconds here. We're gonna make this work, kids. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ah, there we go. All right. So, can you see this? Okay, that's that's good. This is great. All right. So, we do this. Look at me. We are so professional. Good golly. Good golly, y'all. So professional. I'll shrink my stupid head and put it down here. We are so, so very professional here. So, you'll go to Wilmington... O C A dot O R G. All right. Hey, there we are. That's us. At one point. When was the okay, this picture's a couple years old actually. But uh that's okay. There's uh well, you can look in here, there's a few priests from around that you may recognize, and maybe one right here that happens to be a, a bass player of a very, very cool band. Anyway, um that's not where that's not what we're here for. Um, so we're going to go to resources, liturgical. Right here, service texts, learn more. So the uh, Sunday feast day uh, paperback that I just showed you is $4 plus shipping, or you can just download the whole PDF. Or the PDFs in booklet format, by the way, so you can print them um of any of the individual services from that and then we have some weekday services daily vespers which we use at uh, at our parish because we do vespers on wednesday nights and liturgy on thursday mornings um and then some streaming services because you know why not so yeah so if you're looking for um that text and if you just click on complete paperback it will take you over here to lulu and there it is, $4.48. Um, so we don't make any money on this. Uh, that's, that's the cost of printing and then shipping. So it's 
not for profit. But there it is. Um, for five bucks plus, you know, whatever a couple bucks it takes to get it shipped to you, you'll have it. Um, and the cool thing about Lulu Printing Services is it's worldwide, so it doesn't really matter where you are in the world. Um, you can still have it printed locally. But as you can see, it's the only book available. Um, there used to be more, but like I said, it's just, you know. Uh, now, I will mention that the Divine Liturgy book that we currently use at our parish, and I'd like to talk about that a little bit in a bit. Um, he's working on a version 2.0 of this, because, well, I mean, we found some typos, but also uh, he's going to be adding uh, music into the book, and we're going to be shrinking it down. To a, well, I don't need to put that away yet, because it's something I'm going to show you, but uh, just to, uh, to a more manageable size. But um, Now, I did a review on this, um, not long after we printed it. When did when did he? So this is twenty nineteen. So yeah, it was in the first year of the show, I think. Um, because uh, the uh, the Saint Ticon, the new, the latest Saint Ticon liturgy book, um, came out. And I was just not impressed. Um, at all. And uh, I'm gonna expand myself here. Well, no, 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 no. You can stay there because we're gonna use that again. Uh, sorry, just a moment. Here we go. Um, because there there were issues with the Saint Ticon's text that he didn't notice because he doesn't use it. And it was the first thing I noticed is uh, between the second and third antiphon, you have what's called the Prayer of Saint Justinian. It's not in the St. Tecon's book. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God. Why it's not in the St. Tecon's is beyond me. And also in, in older versions of the St. Tecon's, like even going back to the old 1967, um, you have everything in there for uh, the Proscomidi, the Liturgy of uh, Preparation, including uh, charts and such. Behold. Um, whereas uh, the new version, because they've separated it, they separated it into two. You've got, pardon me, one. Come on. Is this the right one? Okay. So you've got the Araticon for the priest and deacon, and then you've got Vespers and Liturgy for the laity, which I they did a good job laying it out. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's a very attractive book. Um but uh the two major issues, three, three major issues that I have with this, four major these four major issues. <laughs> I just <laughs> Reminded of the Spanish Inquisition of Romani Python. <laughs> they keep adding on elements. <laughs> I needed that laugh. I'm I'm I am mentally unstable, folks. Anyway, so uh and this is a couple major issues <laughs> and minor ones that I have with the book. First of all, the prayer of Saint Justinian not being in there. Second of all, um in previous iterations uh, for the antiphons, you would have the entire psalm of the antiphon and then highlighted text of what is typically used in a parish setting, uh, which didn't actually line up with the musical books. So in this version, they are truncated instead of having the whole psalm in there. And unfortunately, it still doesn't line up with the liturgical music we use uh, as far as the text that's there. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two, they, they, they could have put more uh, um, Treparian and Kentucky from the Menaean in there. Um, I think that would, you know, there's no reason why they couldn't have shoved a few more pages in there, obviously. I mean, if you look at the, the, the thickness difference between the two. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Um, 
I personally liked having the Proskomidi in the book, uh, or at least uh, the um, the instructions during the fraction, or whatever whatever we call it, you know, um, uh, during the anaphora. Now, uh, Father Andrew put that in our version because it's important that people understand what's going on back there. Um, so. So, you know, I would, uh, so I, I think Father Andrew's version is going to be kind of somewhere in between the two. Uh, Father Andrew's newer version, I should say, should be somewhere between uh, the two. Because, um, I mean, it is, it's a very attractive book, and it's, you know, breaks in easy, the typeset's fantastic, sewn binding. Um, but, yeah, we, so, like, and here's the weird thing. Now, of course, the uh, the other volume of the Eurotican is, like, the other services so it's you know just for the offices but here's the thing so what we have here this this was the last version of um the service book from saint econ's and it has all three liturgies in it front to back with uh you know preparation and everything and uh so probably the same amount of pages um, now one thing that this does get right is that, uh, it has a separate section with, uh, the, uh, Liturgy of the Faithful for, uh, the Liturgy of, uh, St. Basil, which I think is a, a proper, proper thing to have there. Um, and that, that's the one thing that this one got wrong, because this was just them taking two separate books and publishing them together as one. <coughs> Pardon me. And just to show up, I had the chancel edition of the 60, uh, I think this is the 82, right? Is this the 82? It's falling apart. I think I had, I think I put this one on the show. 84, 1984. Um, and this one is originally from St. John's Orthodox Church in Edwardsville, Pennsylvania. But, um, for the long, I mean, these were donated to our parish when we were still in mission. And so for the longest time, these are the ones we were using. And you could, you could... You can tell which page got used more because they had nice tan color there. And then you know, this lighter color there. Oh, someone's notes are in here. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, yeah, when it comes to self-printing books, I mean, you do some pretty awesome stuff, but, you know, you gotta, gotta pay attention to what you're doing. Since people keep asking about this one, I'm gonna keep it on this bookshelf along with Ooh, and Spooky is just snoozed out in that closet, by the way. Let's check in with the chat. Woo, boy. Wow, y'all been talking about stuff. Let's see, monastic hours, now we talk. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you like not like Portugal? Portuguese are fine people. Um, ba -ba -ba, At the Geronimo's Monastery... Uh, see, see, okay. I don't even know what you're talking about there. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, the big one you can get on the shop. Holy Trinity. Oh, yeah, the Orologian. Yeah, you can get pretty much any Orthodox website that sells books is going to have that Orologian. Mm, Lulu is good. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So, yeah, so that's that's a thing. Oh, I love coffee. That's just for some ASMR. Dripped a little on my leg. Hurts so good. So, anyway. Um, oh, thanks, Constantine. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And thank God for all of you. And I, I really do appreciate everyone tuning in. I know there's only like 11 of you right now. I am not Jay Dyer. That reminds me. Let's, can we talk about Jay Dyer for a minute? Now, I know in the past, you know, I, I had some misgivings about the man, but on the whole, I dig him. And, you know, he brings a lot of people into the church and say what you will, you know, people come to church, people come to church. Um, but I know he posted recently a, a screenshot of like some survey the OCA did 
on uh you know how people discover the church and everything and this one person was like yeah i came in through jay dyer but i really hope the church cracks down on people like him but i don't get it i don't understand i do not understand why people don't like him i really don't i like i i can maybe get that you know you might not dig his personality or his his performance style or whatever but in general like What's that guy ever done to you, man? Like, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I mean, he's not, he's not a one-trick pony either. He, 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 you know, publishes a lot of really cool material. I, I like the esoteric stuff. I, you know, I, re I really, I dig the, uh, all that stuff. I always have. Anyways. But anyway, so like, I, I mean, maybe you guys can help me out with this. I just don't, I just don't understand. Like, again, like, it's the same thing with Father Peter Hears. People love to bitch about him. I don't get it. Like, if you don't like his personality, fine, whatever. But he's not. it's not like he's teaching heresy or anything. Um, Theoria, yeah, he's... I don't agree with everything that man says, but, you know. He's a friend, so, you know... Because I try to be friends with everyone, so, you know, it's not like I'm taking a side or anything. Someone like me wouldn't understand. I don't know. I just, I... I don't know. I, I just don't get it. I love Father Peter. I love Jay Dyer. I love... You know, th there's a lot of great YouTubers now. I can't even keep track of all, like, the on like online apologists there are on YouTube now. And they all have, like, massive amounts of subscribers <laughs> and all this. But, like, I just, I don't understand where where this apprehension towards them is coming from, even after the fact. Like, to go so far as to say that Jay Dyer inspires someone to come into the church, they come into the church, and now they want the church to shut down Jay Dyer for what? For telling the truth? For being excellent with debates, by the way. Have you seen his recent debates? Freaking beautiful. So I, I just, I, I don't get it. Reading esoteric stuff, being a Christian, makes it hit different. Yeah, it does. Well, what's cool is, you know... Having the fullness of the faith, it it sheds a new light on, on all the esoteric stuff. So viewing it through the lens of orthodoxy just like blows the lid off of all of it. I, that's one of the fun parts about it. Of course, I also really like ancient history too. Um, in fact, there was a... Uh, okay, so check this out. Um, if you're into history and that sort of thing, there is a YouTube channel called History Time. It's a one-man operation. And he spends a lot of time and puts a lot of effort into his documentaries. He self-funds all these documentaries that he do. And so the other day he posted like this three-hour documentary on Gablecki Tepe. And uh, it drags a bit, but still really good. So if you're into that sort of thing, go check out History Time. Um, he, he's, he's got some great, great stuff. Uh, we are called not to judge. Correct! His personality may not be a preference to some but can't really tell what is a person's heart with online interactions. Uh, bingo. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, no, you're right on the nose. And and that's what I'm getting at. It's like, I just don't understand why they hate, you know, why the disdain. So anyway. Oh, man, I love coffee. Do you guys love coffee? And if, if you don't mind, I'm going to... See, I'm not smoking whole cigarettes either. <laughs> See, this is an improvement. I'm, I'm, I've smoked maybe a third of this one so far. All right, Spooky. I mean, coffee and cigarettes is it's as American as apple pie, folks. I mean, what are you looking at? Look at this. Spooky, blink so they can see you. I can't even see it. Black. I love my cat. I love my little spooky bear. <laughs> and the users. Um, Zacharias Rush. Who's that? He's got a uh, muse creator. Uh, curator. Pardon, pardon me for mispronouncing that first time. Muse curator. I'm not entirely certain what you're getting at. But that's okay. I, you know, I don't understand much. I the whole uneducated thing is not just a clever tagline. Uh, <laughs> oh, so 
Where did it go? What am I looking for? Hold on a second. Nope. Brain fart. Lost it. Uh, I did have a friend at church uh, went and visited uh, Shrine of St. Nectarios, Nectarios up in Charlotte and uh, got me this. Got some holy water and some oil. Eh, yeah. For anointing. And I used it the other day. And it worked. Sarah, how many accounts do you have? My goodness. <laughs> Derek Creek, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate everyone hanging out on the stream. Because uh, it's it's helping me kind of come out of my funk. And, uh, you know, I, 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 there's a lot of times I want to stream to talk about things. And then I just I lose my motivation. I'm like, well, I can't really talk about this subject for too long. And I kind of give up on it. Uh, so. So I'm glad I actually had something to say today. But uh, hey, we've got a library at our disposal here, folks. Is there a book you want to... I'll, I'll put any book on camera. I don't care. What do you want to talk about? Show's yours, man. I'm, I'm just a humble... No, I'm not humble at all. <laughs> but I am a servant. I'm here for you. Uh, Zechariah Shermer. Oh, Lawrence went to see St. Nectarios' tomb. That is awesome. Dude, I love St. Nectarios, all right? Like, it's impossible not to love the man. You know what we should do? Oh. See, now that I have a computer that actually can run these programs, I think on the Discord server, we're going to have a watch party for a uh, man of God. How does that sound? We'll pick a night and we'll do that. I get people involved in the Discord. That way we can talk about the movie and commiserate, fellowship, that sort of thing. Look at this. This is something I, I don't think I've ever been able to show before because I just haven't. Well, no, I, I think I did show. Okay, uh, Father Peter Robichaud, the old priest at my church, my spiritual father, gave me this amazing icon of St. Nectarios. Now, you can't tell. Uh, just by looking at it from here, but it's it's textured. All like the filigree and stuff uh, on the sides is all raised. It's beautiful. Uh, same thing with the icons I have over my bed of the Lord and the Theotokos. Um, but yeah, love St. Nectarios. Love him. Oh, Luke the Surgeon, yeah. Um, we can watch that movie. Yeah, we See, that's the beautiful thing about the Discord server is, like, we're able to do so much over there as far as, like, watch parties and stuff go, and I'm, I am I don't spend a whole lot of time on the internet, folks. I'll be honest with you. I, uh, that's, that's how bad the depression has been. Like, I just take my foot. I play solitaire. Like, I, I just, it's bad. Oh, the St. Moses film? Yes. Any word on that, by the way? Oh, it is the same creator. Great. Um, yeah, that, the only thing that would, man, wouldn't it be cool if they got Sam Jackson to play him? Because you realize that, uh, yeah, it was Patrick, sure was, um, because, uh, his, his character in Pulp Fiction is very much like St. Moses, and people have often questioned whether or not that was intentional. Yeah, Patrick Lee. And, uh, boy, howdy. I owe that big. I, I, owe, that, I owe him big time. What do you mean, Jess Moses? Most people I talk to either refer to him as St. Moses the Black or St. Moses the Ethiopian. Um, I actually have an icon of St. Moses that Sarah gave me. It's on the wall back there behind the door, unfortunately, because, I don't know, that's where I like him. But before I leave my room, he's the last saint I see. And by the way, if you're looking for a uh, unique icon, 
hit Sarah up. Because she has a really cool icon style. She has her own Discord server now. Feel free to post a link to that in the chat if you want, Sarah. Um, but yeah, you sh it's it's different, but it's cool. Oh, he's your patron. That's awesome. I love Saint Louis. I, I love. I can't think of a saint that I don't love. <laughs> I I can think of saints that I, you know, that I bear in mind more often than others. Um, St. Pantalaemon, for instance, I adore him. I adore St. Pantalaemon because he's helped me. Ugh. Um, there was that small miracle at the monastery when I was there last. That, uh, I believe was by the prayers of St. Pantalaemon. Um, I looked to St. George for courage. St. Ignatius of Antioch. You know, someone who's fearless and, and truly Christ-like in, um, in their suffering. Freaking awesome. Oh! Oh, he's here! Okay, uh, so thank you, Patrick. <laughs> I've been singing your praises. Uh, he says, I forgot to mention that the zip bag with a small piece of cotton in it uh, in the package was used to clean. Oh! Yeah, it's 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 on it's in my prayer corner. H hang on. Okay. That's uh <laughs> It's fragrant. <laughs> it's fragrant. Oh. oh, that happened. Oh, God, what a Marvel Cinematic Universe thing to say. Oh, anyway, so thank you again. You have the computers. Amazing. Um, I'm able to stream, I'm able to do all sorts of stuff. That's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, yeah, I know he loves me. I just don't love myself. It's okay. We're getting there. Almost done with our second cup of coffee, kids. Um, yeah, so if there's any books uh, you want to discuss or you want to take a look at, you know, we can we can do that. Um, we can pray a canon if you want. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so I do have to talk to you a little bit about this prayer book that Patrick sent. Um so it's it's very simplistic. Um, it's from the St. George Monastery. Uh, and it says St. George, Jerusalem, but they're actually out of Australia. And I have one other book that they put together. And it's... I use it as a reference guide. What did I do with it? I don't know. But it's a really poorly put together book. Uh, but it's like this big massive book of prayers and I'm, I actually used it to pull some stuff out for the prayer book I'm working on but um it's it's a no frills book and uh it doesn't have like a normal prayer rule that you or I might be used to so what it has is just it begins with the service of the six psalms for morning mealtime prayers small compline uh then you have some occasional prayers on one page, which are just Jesus prayer, 
prayer after any task. I don't know why there's not one before. Prayer before travel and prayer in time of trouble. Then you have communion prayers, pre and post. The small paraclesis, you know, the canon to the Theotokos. The akathis to the Theotokos. And, of course, the uh, paraclesis to St. George. And that's it. Uh, it's only 100 and some odd pages. So, altogether, uh, end to end, 128 pages. Um, now, I'm assuming you could probably get this uh, on uh, Amazon or Lulu or something. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and find it. Um, and in, in fact, I, I'm pretty sure this has come up in my search before. Let's have a look. <laughs> Make me this drinking. Hey, let's let's go on an internet um, thing here. Do I have miscellaneous game files? Uh, let's just do this. Amazon. Dot com. Oh, that's my normie email address, by the way. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do Orthodox review. Is it on any of my lists at the moment? No, I don't think it is. This is a uh, one of the one of the ones I'd really like to get. Supplicatory canon to the great martyr Anastasia, the deliverer from potions. Um, this is a new one. So I'm. You got the canon. Oh, life of miracles. That's, uh, six bucks. That's not bad. Uh, I have several lists on Amazon. Um, but let's see. Okay, uh, the Icon Writer's Daily Prayer Rule. Um, this actually, uh, Sarah turned me on to. She actually has a copy. I'm kind of hoping one day she makes a video about it because as an iconographer, it'd be nice to hear what she has to say about it. Um, these are some uh, newer versions of uh, Compline and Vespers uh, from the Greek Archdiocese. I still need to get a new copy of The Law of God, the Daniel Soisa version. Uh, ba, 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 ba. No, but I don't think I have the St. George prayer book on my list. I, phew, so many books. So many books. Um, so let's see if we can uh, see if we can find it. Let's come back up here. And we're going to look up Orthodox Daily Prayer Book. I've got this one. It's meh. Got this one. It's meh. Okay, fun fact. Sabra sent me two copies of this, and Amazon screwed up and sent it to my old address both times, and they still haven't, like, let me come over to get them. Um, this is the red cover version of the blue one that we've done on the show. Let's see. I know I've seen it here. Prayer journals. Um, do, 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 do. Little red. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking uh, for them, St. Tecons does have their prayer book back in stock. Uh, let's see. I know it's here. So let's add St. George. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So this is actually the same prayer book, just a different cover, right? No, it's different because I have that in the other room. Uh, I know it's on here somewhere. Compendium of Orthodox Services. They don't say. What's that all about? A collection of frequently used Orthodox Church services where the variables are to be inserted. Volume 1, the Orthodox Church is currently growing. Ba, 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 ba. Huh. Looks interesting.
Huh. Okay, so it's it's the for the British British usage on the EP. Uh paperback. Twenty bucks. Alright, I guess I'm adding it to the to the list. <laughs> Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, do I need this? No, do I want it? Yes. Add to list. Uh, let's see. Orthodox review. Continue shopping. And we'll add volume two to the list as well. All right, so on the list. What else we got? Well, as long as we're looking through self-published prayer books, I yeah, this this is the kind of excitement and fun that people come to Orthodox Review for. Okay, so I can't find this particular one on um, Do to Do, but it's out there. And once I find it, we're we're gonna find it. I think what they did was they just changed the cover on it. No, that can't be possible. <sighs> Do I really want to go out into the other room and search for it? All right, bear with me for a second. Where's my, uh, I don't even have my cane with me. Hang on, I'm going to find it. We're going to get to the bottom of this mystery. Make sure to keep healthy, kids. You don't want to wind up like this. No, wrong, wrong shelf. There we Well, that wasn't so hard. Found it. Oh, God. All right, so, okay, again, St. George Monastery. This one's got a barcode on it. Um, so what's in this one? All right, all the same information on that one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, this one also has a list of all sorts of books that they have. Yeah, it's terrible. I can't even remember if I did a video on this one. Okay, yeah, so this one's different. Um, wow, okay, I still got gas. This has, like, the traditional morning prayers. Um... Instead of, but instead of Psalm 50, it has Psalm uh, 120, 121. Um, then you have mealtime prayers. So it's it's a slightly expanded version. Evening prayer has Psalm 50, Psalm 69, Psalm 142. So yeah, I mean, it's Compline. But uh, yeah, so it's slightly different. And I would say, that's a size difference. Um, also, when you're ordering books like this on Amazon and such, it's always important to check the information on the book to see what the dimensions of the book are, okay? Because one of the nice things about uh, print-on-demand books on Amazon is that that information is there. And so you know whether or not you're getting something that's like massive or something tiny. Uh, unfortunately, you can't tell if the print is correct on the inside. As with the Lorica, unfortunately. Uh, the Schlibdushi? Yeah, we can take a look at that. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Uh, sent something else because it bag with vials in it. Uh, no, you sent me some cigars, uh, some coffee, a, uh, a wooden cross. All great blessings. 
Uh, pardon me. Um, um, I'm a newer convert. Your videos have been very appreciated. Helps me choose prayer books. Oh, good. Glory to God. Um, Orthodox seems to have so many nice prayer books. Christians in the UK don't have these. Orthodox seem to have better books than Catholics even. Yeah. <laughs> because we have so many publishers. Um, let's see. Uh, Alexander, yeah, James, you're right about the UK. A lot of books in our parish come from the US. Maybe it's because there's not an Orthodox seminary or many monasteries in the UK yet. Yeah, um, I, w I would say that's that has a lot to do with it. I mean, the UK is very small compared to America. We've got a lot of people, a lot of churches. Um, and so, therefore, we have a lot of publishers. Now, what surprises me about the UK thing is that the patriarchates that operate in the UK, that being the EP, the Russian Church, and the Antiochian Church, uh, that they don't publish their own prayer books. Still struggling a bit. Has your disability been approved? Uh, not yet. Uh, I had, okay, so the day before I went back to the monastery, I had a general physical appointment with the state government appointed whatever and then i had they did some x-rays on me a week or two ago a couple yeah um you know for like the arthritis and everything so i'm still waiting um but i'm honestly my hopes are not high uh because from what i understand everyone gets you know denied it seems <laughs> the first time around um because you know it's it just bums me out because it's like I'm I'm a burden on a lot of people right now and it's just it's not fair to them. Uh, but you know, ooh, iconography workshop, nice. You should uh, Raul, if you're in the Discord, you should like post some of your icons, man. By the way, if you're not in our Discord, oh, I forgot to put the link in the description. I guess I got to do that now, huh? No, because that that'll be too distracting. Check out my other videos. There's links <laughs> to the Discord in the description. We, we, we gotta have a lot of fun there. We're gonna we're gonna be doing a watch party and everything. Oh, but okay. So, uh, uh, Schlibdushi, um, you said uh, Robertus, yeah. There it is. Schlibdushi. Here it is, with all my bookmarks in it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. So, what in the Schlibdugi did you want to see? Oh, speaking of small books, was it, is it this one? No, I think it is the Schlibdugi. Yeah. So, uh, you can't get this anymore. The reason being. Is uh, this was reprinted by Halabiax Church Supply, and they're done. They're closed. They no longer exist. So, if you find a copy of this, doesn't matter how old or recent it is, snatch it. Um, I'm I'm a little bummed out because okay, so the story with Halabiax is uh, family owned and operated. And the old man passed away, and his kids just didn't want to keep up the business anymore. So they shut down. And before I started having my medical issues, you know, Father Andrew was talking to me about it. And he's like, you know, maybe give him a call, see if he can help. I should have. <laughs> you know, who knows? It could still be open if, if, if that were the case. Uh, Bible-wise, I'm only reading KJV and the Common Book of Prayer. I was christened in the Church of England as a baby, so it was what I know. Wish I was part of a church. I feel you. I feel you on that. Um, the Book of Common Prayer, believe it or not, is is a pretty good prayer book as far as keeping a daily cycle of prayers go. Of course, you've got the whole filioque problem there, but King James, that's 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 the translation I've been using um, lately. Uh, just to get away from my study Bible. Not that there's 
I mean, you shouldn't get away from a study Bible, but uh, just to not be dist so distracted by notes. Um, a buddy of mine sent me just a straight King James with no frills. And uh, so I've been using that lately. Get in touch with the North Orthodox Parish in the UK, James. Yes, Alexander, that is correct. He should do that. Yes, there are plenty of Orthodox parishes in the UK. Uh, you can even contact the Society of uh, St. Sergius in Alban. They got a prayer book. Call them. Where is it? Uh, this was uh, sent to me by my buddy, my buddy Ephraim. Uh, so this is the Ephraim Lash prayer book uh, published by the Fellowship of Saints Alvin and Sergius. And uh, where are they located? They're in... Hey, I'll tell you. Okay. One Canterbury Road, Oxford. I got their phone number right here. James, you paying attention? Get a pen. I'm going to give you their phone number. Right here in the book. Let me know when you're ready. Yup, Oxford. OSB means Orthodox Study Bible. Um, okay, so James, here you go. Their phone number, country code is 4440... Uh, one eight six five 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 two nine nine one, or you can visit the fellowship's website at sobornost.org. I should probably type this in the chat. Okay, um, you you need that another time, James? Right, let's put it up on the screen. I need to get a second camera now. What do I think about the OSB? I love it. I've had mine for 11 years now. Uh, an original Orthodox translation, um, there is another one in the works. And I really wish I had saved the links to it. But anyway, hopefully you got that information. If not, we'll get it to you. But uh, yeah, and so you can get in touch with them, and they'll, they'll help you out. But uh, do you have any updates on the Orthodox translation of the Septuagint? Uh, uh, let me double check that number for you. Um, so 1440, yes. 1865, yes. 552991, yep, that is correct. You got it, James. That is the correct phone number. Oh, yeah, no worries. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah, um, no, there's... Uh, I, I I had links for all this and everything, and then I had that emotional crash, and I just I lost track of a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, um, I, th I think there's a, a Kickstarter or something for it as well. Yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah, so, because what it is, is, um, people are not happy with every Septuagint out there because someone's always got something to say, but, uh, I, I don't know. So, so they're doing another translation. I, I, for one, like the, um, the EOB translation. I think it's fine. Um, that's fully Orthodox. I don't think the English language can ever have a truly perfect translation of the scriptures. I, I don't think the English language is really capable of expressing the original Greek. Um, but also there are some things that people would be like, oh, why does it say it like that? You know, if, if the Greek was translated more literally in, in certain aspects. Um, for instance, in the Lord's Prayer, you know, the daily bread, you know, the Greek term for that very specific kind of bread is like this holy, you know, the super substantial bread of heaven. 
<laughs> so it's, you know, things like that. Since Rokor's mission was to preserve orthodoxy from communism in Russia, has its mission been accomplished at this point? I would say so. In Russia, at least. The NIV is garbage. I have no problem saying that. Um, now we need to save this country from communism and atheism and people with small hats. That's just my two cents. But, uh, yeah. I, I would say... I don't really have any issues with Rokor at all. I love Rokor. The monastery is Rokor. You know, I'm attached to a, I'm attached to a Rokor monastery. So I would say that what's unfortunate at this point is that I think they're putting a little too much emphasis on preserving um, the Russian language services here especially in the old Slavonic, because it smacks of that kind of, you know, liturgical language stuff that the Latins were up to for so long. And I just, I think it's incorrect, but that's just my opinion. Um, I'm not very well educated on it, but that's just, that's my two cents. But no, I love the Russian church. Why wouldn't I? If there was a Rokor parish here, that's, that's where I'd be going. <laughs> um... You know, hot tip, I've been using the Jordanville again. Um, just, you know, after years and years and years and years and years, like, that's just, that's the translation that I'm used to. So that's the one I'm using. It's the one I like. I wish my eyesight was better so I could utilize the pocket version more. What episode was this? Like episode three, <laughs> episode two. The print is just a. Nah, it's not too small, but it's like first thing in the morning. My eyes can't with this one, unfortunately. You know, maybe one of these days I'll have enough money to get new glasses. That'll be nice. There's a lot of things I want. I want a lot of things I don't need. Do I need glasses? An optometrist. An optometrist would tell me, yes, I need glasses, but I'm getting by without them right now. I have reading glasses, but they're, uh, I haven't updated the prescription in so many years that, uh, they really don't help much anymore. And they're the ones that talked me into getting readers instead of all day glasses. Um... help a little bit but no i need a stronger prescription now so yeah i barely ever even try to use them let's see speaking of translations maybe mention something about the eob for those unfamiliar with it good call so the eob the eastern orthodox bible is a recent translation of the new testament that is becoming more common in publications now um, it was originally crowdsourced and edited by, I forget who. For instance, um, this one was published by New Rome Press, um, and, uh, it doesn't have any of the whistles and bells that, like, the other... Uh, that like the original published version does, which is up on the shelf there. And uh, it uh, makes a little more sense. Uh, the language is easy to read. And so publishers like New Rome Press, like uh, St. Ignatius Orthodox Press uses it for their liturgical series. A lot of churches have started using it um, for their for their gospel books. And uh, what I have found in reading through it, that it there, there are some things that just make a little more sense. Um, but when it comes down to it, 
there's not a whole lot of variation in the more traditional translations of the New Testament. But I'm a fan of the uh, the EOB. Yeah, and I, I read I I had an NIV back in like high school, <laughs> back before I knew better. Um, but you know, translations like the NIV or the NRSV, there are blatant omissions and mistranslations uh, to try to nullify gender in the text, things like that, and it's just it's wrong. What do I think about the Western right? In the past, I've said I'm all for it um, because I'm a big fan of uh, preserving liturgical traditions. Um, and so from an anthropological point of view, I'm all about it, especially being a, a European, of European descent mostly. I uh, got a little Slavic in me. Um, <laughs> Being of, of European descent, you know, that's that's kind of my spiritual heritage that I like to take back. Um, it's not necessary, I don't think, but it's there, and that's okay. Um, I have quite the collection of Western Rite books, <laughs> if you go back. Uh, actually, there's an entire playlist on my channel of, of all the Western Rite materials that I've, uh, I've covered on the show. Um... Are there issues theologically with the Western right? Hard to say. Um, I, you know, they're still ironing out some things as far as um, translating some of the post schism practices into an Orthodox, a proper Orthodox. Um, a theologically correct way of, of, of doing them. Um, for instance, I know one, one thing a lot of people that I like to like to talk about is the rosary. It's a high point of contention. And really, um, you know, with a few modifications, the rosary is perfectly fine. I mean, it, rosary is pre-schism anyway. Um, it's just another way of praying. Uh, but what the Latins did with this, they injected this awful idea of like using your imagination when you're praying, like meditating on things. So we don't we don't meditate, all right? Not in that sense. You know, you know, when we sit and think about something, sure. But meditating, no. So it's, you know, you gotta remember the, these these tools, ropes and beads, they're their ultimate purpose is to keep track of the number of prayers being said because people are given a prayer rule and told to say a certain amount of of these given prayers and these beads and, and knots are there to help us keep count. Or, you know, in, in some cases, and uh, several monks have told me this, that, you know, it's also just, it's kind of like an Orthodox fidget spinner. It's, it's something there to keep your focus. Um, yeah, no worries. Thank God. So, so there's that. Well, we made it past the one hour mark. This is the first time we've done that in a long time. Oh, top off my coffee. Warm it up. There we go. Mmm, hot coffee. Hot coffee on a hot day. What's... I'm lucky. I live in America where, you know, we have air conditioning. So, what's it like outside right now? Probably not fun. Ooh, someone texted me. Oh, no, it was just an Amazon alert. Hey, you're signed in. Yeah, I know. Okay, um, here in sunny Wilmington, North Carolina, hold on, it's updating, currently 93 degrees, feels like 104, humidity's at 52%, wind at 12 miles per hour, very high UV index, <laughs> sunset at 807 tonight, and according to the radar, not a thing coming in, so there's that. And it won't dip below 90 until about 7 o'clock. Looks like the overnight, um, it will be around 80. So, yeah, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. Fun! So we stay inside. 
But uh, anyway, uh, any other books we want to take a look at? Or anything else we want to discuss? Because I'm here for you. I can't believe we've got over 11 viewers. We've got 19 viewers right now. I think there was like 26 earlier. That's massive for this channel. Uh, and if I, NIV has garbage art as well. <laughs> I've never seen an NIV with artwork in it. I've seen some... You should have seen some of the covers on these things in the 80s and 90s. Wow, they look like some cheesy, like, totally rad textbook, man. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I went to this church camp once, which uh, was a horrifying experience um, when I was in high school. It's called Teens Encounter Christ. And uh, three days and three nights of brainwashing and not in a good way you take a teenager like me and with ADHD and all that and, and you overstimulate them whoo a Star Wars Bible shoot me now I don't I don't want to live on this planet anymore <laughs> like come on now <laughs> Listen, I uh, only if I'm allowed to burn it afterwards because that's fucking heresy, right? I mean, can can we can we all agree that a Star Wars Bible is most likely heretical? No, I'm sure it just has notes in it that parallel the Force with you know Christianity or some nonsense like that. Listen, here's how it's going to work, because you know I ain't got money. If someone wants to send me something to review, within reason, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to review it. No promises. I, I try not to review Bibles, because it's like, I don't have the proper education to give a good insight on a Bible. I'll, I'll, I'll just say it plain and simple. Um, I don't have the insight into tra into the Greek or into the Aramaic, or, or, or whatever you're dealing with. I mean, I have, I know a little bit about little bits here and there, uh, things that I've gleaned from, I spend a lot of time uh, listening to lectures and podcasts, I'll be honest with you. Um, so I, I don't have, I don't have a great knowledge of biblical translation, I just got a cursory knowledge. Uh, uneducated. That's why I stick to prayer books and anti-Semitism. <laughs> God. <laughs> Lord of mercy. You know, wasn't it like half an hour ago I was smelling a fragrant icon card and crying and <laughs> listen to me now. This is just further proof of just how broken of a human being I am. Lord have mercy on me. Uh, speaking of Star Wars, uh, Alexander says, one of the places where they filmed uh, one of the new ones is actually an Orthodox monastic island. Oh, Skellig Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not an occupied island. Like, there's, there's no one on it. Um, luckily, uh, it is a, a preserved place. So they had to be very careful about what they did there. Can I review fiction? That's a question. Can I? I mean, technically, yeah, I, I, I suppose I could. I'll be honest with you. The last book of fiction that I read was when I was still a catechumen and I read Way of a Pilgrim. That was the last time I read a work of fiction. I haven't read a work of fiction in 11 years. I've thought about it. I really have. I feel bad reading for fun, <laughs> like in, in, in that sense. I feel weird about it. I feel like, well, if I'm going to read something, I should read something spiritually, spiritually profitable. I should read a prayer book or the Bible or patristics. So I have not allowed myself to read fiction in 11 years. What what fiction did you have in mind? 
Orthodox fiction. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, sure, sure. What would you like me to review? Which reminds me, I, speaking of Way of the Pilgrim, now that there's another version out from uh, St. Anthony's Greek Orthodox Monastery, I need to get a, ver that version as well, because that's, well, I'd like it for the collection, for starters. I'd also like to read it again, because it's been 11 years. Um, <laughs> but uh, also, I I'd like to compare it to a few other translations. Um, but yeah. Let's see, I was mostly joking about reviewing it, and it wasn't an actual Bible. It was something about tying Christian themes with Tales of the Jedi. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> right on. You know, speaking of heretical Bibles, call me a coward. Dostoevsky? Oh, you, you're barking up the wrong tree, man. That's, I've tried reading Dostoevsky, and let me tell you, 20 years ago, I might have been able to handle it. Unfortunately, I've done so much damage to my brain with drug and alcohol abuse in my younger days that I'm not sure I have brain processing power to read Dostoevsky. There's, there's other reviews out there, you know? I'm not the only, only guy that reviews these books. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to, I, I could understand if, like, if someone wanted to, you know, know what I thought of said book, you know, I could, you know, but my opinion really matter that much. I'm, I'm more about sharing how cool these prayer books are. Yeah, Dostoevsky, I was invited to a, a reading group. I think they were reading the Brothers Karazimov or something. It's like, nah, that book is way too thick for me. <laughs> um... Yeah, plus uh, my non-prayer book reviews tend to tank. And as much as I am just doing this for fun, um, I do make a few bucks on it. So I, I do have to, you know, because now I depend on that money. Um, <laughs> so now I kind of, I have to keep my numbers up. Kind of sucks. I don't. Live far from St. Anthony's. Oh, you're in Florence. Right on. My mother actually lives out uh, in Maricopa. So if I ever get out to visit my mother, maybe we can get some coffee. I only have a Gideon's Bible. What is a good Bible you recommend for an Orthodox inquirer? Dude, you got a Gideon's? That's King James, man. It's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but uh, if... If you're looking to get into orthodoxy and you want to drop a few bucks on a Bible, Orthodox Study Bible. I think they're like 40 bucks now. Let's find out. Back to our Amazon adventure. Ah. What the hell? No, what no, what the I can't. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. Do 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 do. Well, you can get it in Kindle for twenty bucks. I actually have it on Kindle. Uh, the leather soft is seventy six bucks. Um. Oh crap! You probably got to go to the Ancient Faith website for it. Oh wait, no. Here we go. Hardcover. Fourteen dollars. What? No, 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 no. That's not. Hold on a second here. That's no. That's not the same Bible. Amazon is lying. Oh gosh. All right. I hate to do this, folks, because I'm really not a fan of this group anymore. But well, we're gonna go to Ancient Faith. Because they're the ones publishing it now. No, oh, no, no. Okay, Ancient Faith Store. It's our study Bible. Ah, thirty-five bucks. That ain't bad.
Well, I'll even put it in the chat for you. There you go. So yeah, um, and that's what the actual cover of it looks like now. The old version, which is one I have, the old hardcover looks like this. I guess I should probably blow the screen up more so you can properly see it. Or maybe not, but yeah, so. But yeah, it's and I actually put tabs in mine, which I kind of regret. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, the Orthodox Study Bible. All right, yeah, no worries, bro. Uh, where, did I, where did I miss? Where did I miss? Where did I miss? Uh, haven't they always published it? Um, no, they've always carried it. It was published by Thomas Nelson. And uh, the actual text block is still printed by Thomas Nelson. But now um, this ancient faith edition um, is put together by them. I had a leather soft, and, and I gave it to someone. Because, you know. Or you can get a case of 12 for $419.58. <laughs> there are a few books that I would buy by the case to give away. I'll, I'll be honest with you. And um, I was actually talking to Father Peter Hears about this not too long ago. There's some book he mentioned... Or no, maybe it was it was Father Michael. I'm sorry, over at uh, Living Orthodox. But yeah, um, yeah, there are certain books that I just, if I if I was a rich man, I would just buy by the pallet and give away to people, <laughs> you know. So, but uh, oh yeah, it was um, the uh, Parcher of the Soul. Uh, cause, uh, by the way, if, if you're not subscribed to Living Orthodox, he's got a lot more subscribers than I do now, um, because he's an actual priest and he knows what he's talking about. Uh, yeah, I'm coming up on my fourth anniversary here on the channel and I still haven't, well, how many subscribers do I even have? Like, a little over 5,000, something like that. 5,045 people, which is fantastic, brilliant. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, some of these other channels that have started in the past year, they're, like, psh, through the roof. But, anyway, Departure of the Soul. Um, if you've got the money to invest in it and you really want to get down and dirty about toll houses, yeah, it's there. It's all in there. It's <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to make that, that tiny hat song into a goy song. The Freemasons do have a Bible, and I've seen it. When I was working at the vape shop, someone actually brought it in to show it to me. And uh, I didn't touch it. I didn't even want to put my hands on it. But according according to, to what dude told me, it's just the King James Version. But uh, yeah, no, I saw that cover with the, the thing on it, and it, I didn't want to touch it. Did not want to put my hands on it. Um, he's actually not the president of Thomas Nelson anymore. Uh I think that's part of the reason Thomas Nelson kind of pulled the plug on on publishing it themselves. Um, yeah, he he runs his own smaller publisher now, um, and actually he's he's on Ancient Faith Radio because I, I he's got a because he's a catechist, so I think he's got a podcast on there if I'm not mistaken. There is some good stuff on Ancient Faith Radio, by the way. It's just mostly from dead people. I love you too. Um, but yeah. So yeah, Orthodox Study Bible. If 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 you got the loot to get one, get one. If not, your Gideon's King James is fine. I've got a I've got old pocket Gideon's around here somewhere, right? Yeah. No. Yeah, they uh. They've been updating their covers on the Gideons. So this is a this is a little dusty, but yeah, a little pocket Gideons. <laughs> what is this King James, right? I think so. Uh, 
Maybe it's New King James. I don't know. Tiny print. Much like that pocket prayer book. I, I just can't... Uh... But anyway, yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with getting this Bible. It's the Bible, you know? Read it. <laughs> My granduncle got buried at a graveyard which had like 50 graves with squares and compasses on them. Oof. It does look like 70s styling, right? But it's... It's new, because on, 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 on the presentation page in the front and everything, it's got, you know, Gideon Bible app. Download from the App Store or Google Play. This book not to be sold. By the way, uh, back when I had a car and, you know, money and time on my hands, I would go to thrift stores and pick up all their Gideon Bibles and uh, redistribute them, because I would go up and show them. And on the first page, it always says that these are not to be sold. And places will try to sell them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, usually if you go to a thrift store and get a Bible, they're not going to charge you anyway. I've never been charged for a Bible at a thrift store. Retro futuristic, yeah. It's cool. And it's, it's kind of like this... Uh, the cover materials... I mean, you know, it's like some sort of plasticine thing, but it's it's got a really cool texture to it, which I don't, you know, I don't think the camera would pick it up, or maybe you can sort of see how it's textured, like like old board stock would be, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's it's, it's Gideon's glued binding, you know, it's not exactly built to last, but it gets scripture in your hands. Yeah, seeing icons and stuff. It, it, but uh, you know what? Like, you got to rescue them. Um, it's, you know, if, if you're able to, if, you know, if, if you've got the financial means to do so. Um, if I ever see an icon at a thrift store, I'm rescuing it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there are some people, like, in, in larger metropolitan areas, you know, there are Orthodox Christians that will, like, go thrifting specifically to, like, rescue icons and stuff like that. Oh, do they? Online store, you say? Goodwill. Yeah, Goodwill puts all, all sorts of stuff on uh, on their online store. And actually, Chris Anderson, back when I used to have him on the show, um, you know, that, that was kind of the secret to his success because he would buy all sorts of cool stuff on Goodwill, like old uh, samovars and stuff. And actually, that, um, that big old Haddock Dewey Rames Bible that he sent me, you know, he, he found that on Goodwill. So it's pretty rad. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I try to avoid looking at stuff like that when I am on the internet because, like, you saw how I got when we were looking at at Amazon. Like, I immediately go into like, oh, I want things mode, and it's that's not a good place for me to be. Um, you know, if I had pockets full of money, it'd be a different story. But no, because I, I I get I get. Man, I get ramped up and attached really quick, you know. Like, for instance, I was looking at guitar amps one day online, you know, watching reviews and stuff. Yeah, a Haddock on Goodwill. I think he said he paid like 100 and change for it. And uh, all of a sudden, I started obsessing about this guitar amp, $300 guitar amp, which, as far as guitar amps go, is pretty cheap. And like started bugging out and I like sent myself into a spiral over something I don't need. You know what I mean? Um, right? Totally go broke rescue and orthodox stuff from the store. That's also why I, I'm glad I don't have the opportunity to go out as much as I would because I, you know, just because I know there's some, there's some antique shops downtown that I know would have things that need to be rescued. But what are you going to do? Uh, oh, pardon me. But, uh... Yeah. Not 100. One hour and 42 minutes. We're on a roll! Anyway, um, what else we got? What else we got? What else is going on? Mm. Yeah, we're not... I, I, I don't want to get into like politics or anything like that because that's what got me in trouble last time. So, plus, 
people already know that I'm not a good person. I don't need to be adding fuel fuel to that fire. Um, yeah, relics and okay. Tell your rich friends. So, and I just said I wasn't going to get into politics, but this is important. So, as you know, the church in Ukraine is being sacked by the schismatics and gutted. And all the relics and everything is making its way into the antiques trade in Europe. Uh, so, if you know rich people, um, tell them, hey, try rescuing some shit from, uh, from the antiques trade in Europe. But, yeah, Chris Anderson, um, again, he... Uh, he would buy whole lots of like relics and stuff from these online sellers that like don't know where they came from, but you know, gotta bring them back to a church. Uh, Metropolitan Pavel, Lord have mercy. Yeah, they're selling them, of course. Salvation Army, huh? I don't like the Salvation Army. I don't like any nonprofit that's actually for profit. I still can't get over looking at myself on the screen and there not being a lag. <laughs> I just think that's great. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, if you ever go antiquing or <clears throat> thrift shopping and you see orthodox things, uh, do what you can. Mm hmm. I mean, I would go so far as to say, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to a manager or whatever and being like, this uh, this actually belongs to the church. Yeah, by non-Orthodox, correct. Abbot of uh, Kiev Caves, yep. They moved into prison a few weeks ago? How did I miss that? Because, I mean, I don't dig around on the internet, but I'm well established on telegram and that's one of the things that i figured i would have noticed i know they extended his uh his house arrest i didn't know they put him in prison though or maybe i did and i was just too depressed to log it in the... yeah so pray for metropolitan pavel yeah this whole ukraine thing still got me messed up uh so, oh jeez yeah, the, the the initial arrest video I saw. But, no, I... Man, I, I feel bad for not being up to date on that. Lord have mercy. Hmm. Coffee and cigarettes. Can, can, can we... Can we hear it for coffee and cigarettes, ladies and gentlemen? Um, jail is the worst they use. Don't know what that means here. Oh, word. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. All I know is jail makes saints. You know, it's like a saint factory. Uh, Alexander says, when it comes to uh, saving relics, I've heard that it's not allowed to buy them canonically, so you need to work out some other way to save them, right? Or maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure about that, but I know people that buy them and then give them to the church. Uh, like, kind of like paying a ransom. So, yeah. Yeah, I would love a copy of The Rudder. <laughs> Did you know that there's... It's not in print? The Rudder is not in print. You cannot get a print version of The Rudder. Publicly, that I'm aware of. Like, how else are we supposed to check the cannons? Hive mind. Let's, let's do something about this. Got all these armchair orthodox apologists... I like to talk all this smack. I think we need to get a copy of the rudder in all their hands, mine included, so we can figure out if what we're saying is correct. I assume if you immediately surrender them to the church, it's fine. Oh, yeah, I would imagine so. You can get it at Barnes & Noble? How did I miss that? This is This is how far out of the game I am, folks. Uh, B N dot com. 
Oh, yeah, I guess I should put this up on screen so y'all can enjoy the journey with me. The Rudder. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oral sex for women? No, that's not what I'm looking for. What is this? Who is this person? Rudder. It's a name? No, I'm looking for the rudder. You. Ugh. Oh, here it is. Found it. Volume 1. What about Volume 2? I need Volume 2 as well. Yeah, I know it's not available at my store. Why would it be? If it was there, I would have found it. All right, well, anyway. So, yeah, okay, it is at Barnes & Noble. And so I need a copy of the rudder. You DM'd it to me. Yeah, I did beat you to it. <laughs> but I appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. There it is, the damn rudder through Barnes & Noble. Volume 2 is forthcoming. Yeah. I've heard that one before about books. Oh, sure, we're going to publish it in January. Three years later. Maybe this winter? <laughs> I mean, how long did it take them to finally, for someone to finally pick up the ball and put out volume five of the Philly, Philokalia, which I still don't have? I'm, I'm pretty sure the reason I'm half dumb now is because I read the Philokalia as, uh, as a very young Orthodox and uh, it melted my brain. <laughs> my priest was like, I didn't think you'd go through him so fast. And I was like, Dah! when I was done, it was bad. That's why you got to be careful with spiritual texts. Because you can just melt your psyche. It's it's a thing. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I got to get the rudder. Uh, I miss working. You know what I mean? Not just because it gave me uh, a sense of purpose and self-worth. But uh, making money uh, is good for, uh, for uh, buying stuff. Got my hands on the fifth volume. A wonderful printing. Yeah, I've I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's just one. Of the, it's on the list, you know. It's just one of the many many things I've not been able to keep up with. It's only. Oh, what the? Uh... No, I thought there was a paperback. Let's find out, shall we? No. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna dig around on Amazon more. I think we're gonna dig around on Amazon more. Uh, uh I don't know, we don't need to sign in. We'll look for Philokalia Volume Five. The volume. Huh. This is not the Volume Five that I'm familiar with. But there is a paperback for $24.83. But it's the same version that I've seen. So it's a non Christina's translation. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's... This is from this year. But, yeah. Okay. So there it is. Volume 5. For uh, $25. Make you holla, paperback. Or you can get a hardcover for 10 bucks more. Or you can get it on a Kindle for 10 bucks. It's a fucking win, right? Go and get you one. Yeah, I know the Palmer is the one I want, but unfortunately that one was never completed. Oh, wait. Is it here? Because I, I thought that one was never finished, and that's why... Oh, wait. Get out of town! Oh, hey, it's an import. Oh, 
August 8th. Uh, that's tomorrow. Ooh, I can do uh, $10.76 uh, $10 a month for six months. At example, APR of 30%. What? Well, anyway, I'll be able to get an import. So it's just going to cost me an arm and a leg. But it's good to know that that's there. Yes, I see that, Raul. Yeah, I had no, I had no idea, um, but of course, yeah. So it'll be available here in the states tomorrow as an import. So that's interesting. The publican's prayer book. I don't know. I don't. I don't keep up with the Melikites. If it's not on their website, I'd say no. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you on that one. You had Candace Owens suggest it to you again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I... I... As much as I love collecting... I, I the, the Uniate stuff, I had to stop putting it on the show for numerous reasons. Uh, it was causing way too much friction. Um, and frankly, you know, one of the happy side effects of the show is drawing people into orthodoxy and, uh, you can't do that with, with, uh, unit stuff. I've got three Orologians in the other room that have not been on the show because they're published by unit publishers and I don't want to promote them. Oh, not as an import? That's good news. Man, Patrick, you're just like a superhero, bro. By the way, uh, Patrick does have a YouTube channel he started recently, uh, and he's got some shorts on there, which are clips from other um, church fathers and stuff. Really good. So good bite-sized uh, things to keep going. So go subscribe to Orthodox Insights. Do that. Um. Now, we're about five minutes away from the two-hour mark. Should we go for three hours, or should we call it a day? I know no one's going to rewatch this after the fact, so it doesn't really matter. What else can we look into? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add this to the list. Bam, there it is. So let's see what's on the Orthodox review list, because we might have to review the list and uh, and maybe uh, edit the list. So I'm going to move my dopey-looking face over here so you all can see what's on here. So we've got the Philokalia, Volume 5. We've got this Compendium of Orthodox Services, uh, which is from the uh, EP in the UK that we just found. We got the Supplicatory Canons, the Great Martyr Anastasia. We got the Psalter of the Mother of God, which um, still not entirely certain what it is, but uh, this actually, um, I was talking to my deacon, Deacon Patrick, about it uh, because he he teaches a class on the liturgy, and because I had asked him, I was like, "Is there a book that just has like a rundown of where in the Bible everything in our liturgy comes from?" And he's like, "I don't know." And so I found this, and that's exactly what it is. So I desperately want a copy of that. Um, this is just, I thought it would be an interesting read, The Heavenly Banquet. Uh, we talked about the Icon Writer's Daily Prayer. Um, Harp of Glory. I thought I had a copy, but apparently I don't. Um, some of this stuff is actually for just personal edification, like this Ethiopian stuff. I just, I'm fascinated by the Ethiopian prayer rules uh law of god christ within me prayers and meditations from anglo-saxon tradition i'm not sure about uh, the antiphonary of bangor and the divine offices um i've got a thing for celtic christianity uh an interest um prayers from the Celtic, uh, ancient celtic uh 
needs two, has one. I don't, I don't recall ever buying it. Uh, um, uh, Syriac Breviary. Because, uh, you know, I'd like to know more about the Syriac tradition. Uh, Christ the Golden Blossom, a treasury of Anglo-Saxon prayer. The Cloud of Unknowing and other works. Um, was suggested to me because it would be an interesting read, apparently. Uh, another version of the Divine Liturgy of St. James, because um, that's something I'm trying to build a, a collection of. Orthodox Survival Course is no longer available. Surprise, surprise. Um, theological and Practical Treatises uh, and the Three Theological Discourses of St. Simeon the New Theologian, which uh, I... And uh, some of these I can actually get through Holy Cross Monastery, uh, this being one of them. Um, more St. Simeon, uh, another Psalter, uh, Canons of St. Joseph the Hesychast, um, a very, like, random Akathist book here, Elder Cleopa of Romania. Uh, I still don't have a copy of the Book of Enoch or Jubilees or any of that stuff. Um, really like to get my hands on that. Um, the Angelic Life, Vision of Orthodox Monasticism, uh, Sacred Harp. If you don't know about Sacred Harp, just Google it and prepare to be wowed. Um, it is a uniquely American form of uh, singing the Psalms. And uh, actually, the monks at Holy Cross uh, do have a few videos on their channel of them singing Sacred Harp melodies, and it's just breathtaking. Uh, trampling Down Death by Death by Father Spiridon, because Father Spiridon. Uh, death by Envy, the Evil Eye, and Envy in the Christian Tradition. Um, Father uh, George Aquaro is an Orthodox priest out West and an exorcist. He knows a lot. Um, I have various versions of uh, uh, the Enoch Jubilees and whatever collections on here i just you know now this is is one that if i can get my hands on i would love saint basil of ostrog um patriarch pavel of serbia the walking saint so that's what's on the orthodox review list right now i have not reviewed everyday saints because i gave my copy away years ago but I always recommend it. It's a good one. Let's see what's inspired by my list. Life of the Virgin Mary. Which uh, I actually sold my copy. Because I needed the money. But I've never seen this version. Uh... Oh! Maximus Constus. Great translator. So I'll tell you right now, right off the bat, I, I wholeheartedly approve his translations. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. What else we got? What else do they suggest? Genesis creation and early man. Don't worry, it's being reprinted. Hang tight. Desert Fathers, we already got that. Oh, so that's a thing. Ooh, my stomach. Maybe I need to eat something instead of drinking coffee all day. But up, up, but up, up. Review the rudder. <laughs> no, I'm not going to review the rudder, but man, I tell you, I got to get a copy. Because I, I just, I want to know. I want to I wanted know what the damn cannons are. So, like, if I'm saying something wrong, I can correct myself. Uh, let's see. Looks like I missed out on getting the hardcover volume four. That's a bummer. Uh, what's the best prayer book to date? Uh, that's The best prayer book is the one you use, my guy. Uh, Serbian Liturgicon has the Bible verses for the liturgy. It's out of print, but I could send info on any... Um, I appreciate the offer, but that, that other book that I was showing you, um, it literally just has the liturgy, and it's just like, boom, 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 boom. 
It's it's really well put together from what I understand. Uh, P, uh, Deacon Patrick did get a copy. He said it's it's wonderful. So Angelic Life, yeah, it's Luke Smith has a cool uh, translation of the Book of Enoch for like ten bucks. Cool. Uh, Luke Smith, I'll I'll check that out. Thank you, Alexander. I appreciate you, you looking out like that. So, yeah, because well. All right, so there's there's a series on uh, revelations, on the you know the revelation of John. Would you recommend? I would get the old Orthodox prayer book from Erie. I think it has most prayers out of all the prayer books. Um, I would. I mean, it's it's a great prayer book. It's kind of thick. Uh, the latest edition. I actually gave my copy of the latest edition to Father Andrew at church. Um. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of that book. I've still got second edition. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, I think it's a great book. I mean, if, you know, because it's, it's parallel text. So you've got the old church Slavonic on one side, and then you've got the English on the other. I really wish they would uh, republish it with just the English for those of us that have no use for the old church Slavonic. Um, but yeah, it does have a mass, uh, a massive amount of prayers in it. Uh, of course, the prayer rules in the old rite are different uh, from what you'll encounter in in other uh, in like you know Rocor. Well, I mean they're in Rocor, but like in in like say the Jordanville book, the Saint Tikhon's or the Holy Transfiguration. Um, but yeah, I mean I, I would never say don't buy this prayer book unless it like sucked and unless it was like a terrible translation or something. But no, I mean, yeah, the Erie prayer book is great. Uh, what's your opinion on the best Psalm translation for those preferring a more modern style of English? Great question because you're not the first person to ask me that this week. <coughs> so I've, um, I've been thinking about it <laughs> and um, there are two. that I would recommend. The pizza salter, but that's kind of expensive. So, so there's this one, translated by uh, Nicholas uh, Ramos. Uh, this uh, just published this year. Um, I think I got it maybe a month after it came out, something like that. Um, uh, no, sorry, last year, my bad. But anyway, um, as far as modern English translations go, um, and we, we actually did a live stream where we read Psalm 118 out of this uh, a while back. But yeah, it's just, it's a fantastic modern English translation that doesn't sound like garbage. For instance, I just opened to Psalm 109 arbitrarily. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will send you a rod of power out of Zion, so rule in the midst of your enemies. The, the dominion is yours in the day of your power, in the splendor of your saints. I begot you from the womb before the morning star. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at your right hand crushed kings in the day of his wrath. He shall execute judgment among the nations. He shall fill them with dead bodies and shall crush the heads of many upon the ground. He shall drink from the brook in the way. Therefore, shall he lift up his head. So, yeah, um, it's not. I don't know. I just think it's a good modern translation. Time to lurch turn Slavonic. <laughs> Never. I don't think I'm capable of learning uh, a second language, really. I used to be fluent in French, and then, you know, brain damage. Uh, I worked in restaurants for 20 years. I've worked with and around and lived with and around uh, Latin Americans the best part of my life. And uh, I still can't speak Spanish. So, oh yeah, no worries, bro. Um, but yeah, so that particular Psalter... 
and we'll do the Amazon thing again so I can get the link for you. It's on Amazon. Uh, is it in my Salter list? I have a list of just Salters. Mm, nope, I haven't added it to my Salter list. So we're going to go uh, Salter. Promise. Yeah, learn how to type, dork. Come on, where is it? Show it to me. What's what's going on here? All right, we will find it. Uh, let's see. Ah, there it is. Twenty-five dollar. Thank you, Hala. And it's free if you have Kindle Unlimited. So I'll go ahead and put that in the chat for you. There you go. We're done with that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so that there's that. Um now as far as other salters go, the uh Wow, that's only um only nine dollars on Kindle. This is the one from uh, and we did a review on it uh from uh Saint Ignatius Orthodox Press, the uh, Ephraim Lash translation, which uh is all right if you're into the Ephraim Lash translation of things. But uh, this this one actually just sucks. I don't like that translation at all. But yeah, so that's that's. But yeah, so if you're looking for a modern, comfortable, and elegant modern English translation of the Psalter, that's the one I'd go with. But, uh, all right, kids, I might have to call it a day because I think I just need to lay down. Oh. Uh, plus, I should probably eat something eventually. I've got, uh, I've got lentils, I've got barley. I think I've got a can of crushed tomatoes still, too. I've got some onions. Yeah, I can make a meal out of that. <laughs> all right, folks. I appreciate y'all hanging out and hanging in there and, and chatting. And I'm if I helped, glory to God. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad we all got to hang out again. And uh, and uh, thank you again for your prayers. Uh, I know after all this interaction, I'm probably having another emotional crash. So <laughs> not looking forward to that part. But anyway, uh, y'all... Uh, I love doing this with you, and I love you all to bits. I really do. And uh, I, I, God grants me a lot of joy uh, in life uh, through through this thing we're doing here. So, anyway, and thanks again, Patrick, for the computer. Live streaming is, is so much nicer now. <laughs> um, anyway, yep. Uh, pray, pray, pray. Don't forget to go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. Go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. God bless you all, and uh, pray for me, and hopefully we can do this again soon, uh, sooner rather than later.